Hi, my name is Melissa, and believe it or not, I'm happily married. In fact, I've been happily married for 18 years to someone that I have known for over 25 years. Now, let me just say this, happily married, it can have an exclamation or a question mark, and I have had both through the course of my relationship. Before I was married, I was single. I was living in Harlem, in New York City. I was an entrepreneur, I was doing my thing. I cannot cook to save my life. I was eating out every night, I had an amazing social life. In fact, friends of mine would always say, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Because I want to tag along, because it could have been going to the newest restaurant, or it could have been taking a three-day trip to Miami. However, all of a sudden, I met this woman, a woman that I had known for a long time and never, ever, 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 ever imagined she would come back into my life. But because of professional circumstances, we found ourselves back together. And what was designed to be a very professional relationship where we were working together evolved into something that was very personal. We realized that we weren't really friends at our undergraduate school, but we certainly knew of each other. She was a model. I was the finance nerd who was running businesses on campus. And so we were familiar with each other. But over the course of time, I got to know who she was beyond being on a runway. She got to know who I was besides being a finance geek. And ultimately, we fell in love. Now, it was a little more complicated than that because she already had four kids. And I was living single in New York City in Harlem. And I'll never forget the day that we decided we were going to be together, not necessarily married, but at least be together. I agreed because it was easier for me to move than her. I moved from New York City to Bethesda, Maryland. And I'll never forget. I had made so many trips before, but on this last and final trip, when I said, literally said goodbye to my Harlem home and they pulled up to our house, there was a white picket fence. And I literally sat down on the curb and started crying because I said, oh my God, I have sold my soul for suburbia. And that was a major shift, not to mention the shifts of managing kids, of managing blended families, of managing young people who have learning disorders and knowing nothing about children, to actually finally agreeing one day to have our own children, which was probably the most frustrating process ever because people said it was a life choice and doctors would not do a transfer IVF. And so we had arguments, we had high we had lows. Was it really worth the effort? Should I move on? Should I go find somebody else? Should I have a kid? Which definitely was the answer was no. And realize that in the tiny things that were going on, we realized that ultimately we were meant to be together because there are much bigger things for us to do. When I realized that uh, the potential of spending my life with this person, it scared the hell out of me. I grew up in a single parent household. My father passed away when I was three months old of a massive heart attack. And so I did not grow up around relationships, nor did I grow up around successful relationships. And so I really wasn't sure what I was getting into. And i never forget, my wife and I now went to a conference and she ended up proposing to me. And she took me out into the desert because we both have native heritage in us and we were out on sacred land. She got down in one knee and she proposed to me and I was like, holy shit, what is happening? And I know that I said yes, when we got back to the hotel room, we were supposed to actually go to a Halloween party. And she tells the story that I sat on the couch rocking back and forth for at least an hour because I just could not wrap my head around what was happening. And as you can imagine, as somebody who never saw themselves in a long-term relationship, I had to learn how to share. I had to learn how to share her with her kids. I had to learn how to share stuff with the kids. I also had to learn that working was the end all be all. I'm completely driven by the work that I do, but I realized that if you're gonna be in a relationship, you can't just work all the time. You have to carve out time for that person. You have to carve out time to have dates. I could easily sit at my desk or sit at home and be on my phone or working or talking to entrepreneurs and helping them. And I realized that that's not successful. She has taught me that it's important to have a date night at least once a month. She's made it important that we have mutual friends that I don't get to hang out with my friends. So she gets to hang out with her friends, but it's important that we have a community around us. So with all the slings and arrows of judgment from religious groups and mockery on television shows and stereotypes, you need a community to be able to surround you. And so I think that is the most important thing that has actually saved our marriage is the community and the village that we have. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to keep a marriage happy.